So let's start with our digestive system. Our topic again is Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, the macrobiotic approach. So let's start by seeing the first illustration, which shows us the structure of our digestive system. And we need to see this in terms of yin and yang to understand how to approach these problems. Okay. So I'll do a schematic version of that here on the board. Okay. Kind of a crude version. You have more the precise version, okay? So the first thing we do is we classify this the digestive system into upper and lower. So the upper portion means the mouth, the esophagus, and the upper portion of the stomach. Okay? The lower portion, the lower stomach, the duodenum, the small intestine, and the large intestine. Okay? So what you, using what you've studied so far in terms of yin and yang, expansion and contraction, which part would you think is the more expanded part? Which part is the more condensed or contracted part? Anybody? Very good. Upper is more yin or expansive. The lower is more yang or contractive, okay? Good. That's a very important distinction to make. Okay. Please come in. Then, not only do we have up and down, we also have left and right. Left side, right side. So that is especially relevant when we're looking at the colon. Right? The colon. Why is that relevant with the colon especially? Because the colon does what? Yeah, it goes across, right? Spans both sides of the body. So on the right side, you have which colon? Ascending colon, correct? And on the left side, you have the descending colon. Now, here comes a fun question. Looking at the right side of the body and the left side of the body, which is more yin and which is more yang? We've established already upper part is yin, lower part is yang. How about right side, left side? Which? Why? He's saying left is yang. Very good, right? Which direction is the energy moving on the right side? Up or down? Up. Very good, right? The ascending colon. And here we have the descending colon. And especially the most lower part, rectum. This is the most contracted muscular part of the colon. Okay? So let's say again yin and yang. Okay. So now we've established two things. We've established the fact, you can write here on your chart, upper part is more yin, okay, of the digestive tract. Please draw, you can even draw a line through the middle, right? And lower part is more yang, number one. Number two, right side is more expansive or yin and left side is more contractive and young. So far so good? Everybody? Okay. The next thing we can see is the acid and alkaline balance of the digestive system. So generally speaking, alkaline means what? More yin or more yang? More yang, good. And acid means more yin. So let's start at the very top, the mouth. What is the primary digestive secretion in the mouth? Saliva. Acid or alkaline? You didn't go to Lino's lecture? Alkaline. Very good, right? So, yang. 
That's why chewing is so important to make our food alkaline. Because the next part of the digestive system, stomach, secretes strong what? Acid, right? Stomach is very yin. So if the food in the mouth is thoroughly mixed with yang alkaline saliva when it reaches the stomach, there's a very proper balance that goes on in the acid secretion. And that alkaline saliva somewhat mitigates the very strong effect of the acid. That's why chewing is important. So like Japan, for example, Asia, what kind of rice do they eat in Asia? White rice, okay, isn't it? And, no, no, don't worry, please come in. As you know, the white rice doesn't require chewing, isn't that right? Compared to brown rice. So that means when you quickly eat white rice, you don't have the opportunity to mix that with saliva. So that becomes very acid. And Japan is very famous for what kind of cancer? Stomach cancer. Lack of chewing, white rice, and foods like sugar. Okay? All right. The next is the duodenum. What kind of secretion in the duodenum? What is the duodenum, by the way? Duodenum is what? The connector, very good, between the stomach and the small intestine. It's actually the upper part of the small intestine. The duodenum doesn't secrete, but receives from the liver and the pancreas very strong alkaline juice, pancreatic juice, and from the liver bile. So we have yang, yin, yang, okay? Small intestine. Do you know what kind of secretion is going on? Small intestine. Well, if we follow this pattern, it must be what? Yin. Yin. A little bit more acid, good. And then large intestine. Alkaline. Okay, so you have this beautiful harmony of yang, yin, yang, yin, yang. Okay, opposite. Yes, please. Yes. The, let's go through it one more time. Saliva, more alkaline. Stomach acid, right? Duodenum, bile, and pancreatic juice. Pancreatic juice is something like saliva, yang. Small intestine, which comes next, right, is acid. And then finally, the large intestine is alkaline. Okay? Beautiful harmony is there. If we eat properly, in other words, if we eat foods which are matching our digestive tract, this harmony works perfectly day after day. And we experience no trouble. What is food that matches our digestive harmony? How can we decide that? How can we determine that? What food is good? What food is not good? How can we see that, actually, by looking at the digestive tract itself? How can we begin to determine that? What's the first clue? <laughs> How many teeth? How many are molars or premolars? Isn't it? 20. The word molar means millstone in Latin. What is a millstone? Crushing wheat. These are grain and fiber crushing teeth, not tearing teeth. Eight incisor. What are these good for? To cut, right? These are the teeth of rabbits or deer that come into your garden and cut vegetables, right? That means 28 vegetable teeth, grain and vegetable teeth, versus how many canine? Four. Wow. What's the ratio here? The ratio is seven 
to one. So that means, yes, animal food can be eaten, but much less than plant food. Now, everybody's saying plant-based diet, right? You're all here because of plant-based diet. But we were, the, we were almost the first ones saying that 40 years ago, right? This is a big reason. The other big reason is, if you compare our digestive tract as a whole to the digestive system of a carnivore, like a wolf or a lion, how is ours different? Much longer, especially ours, right? Especially which part? Which part in the, in the carnivore is very short? The colon. Why is that? Ours is much longer. Ours is like five feet squeezed in. Because the minute prey is killed, the minute the gazelle is taken down by the lion, what happens in the body of the gazelle in the hot African heat? Immediately starts to do what? Decompose, right? Decompose into toxic bacteria and toxic protein breakdown compounds like ammonia. So it's very important for that decomposing flesh to be rapidly expelled from the body of the lion. Can you see? All right, so our system is much longer. So when we eat meat, especially in what season? Summer. There's plenty of opportunity for what? 98 degrees in our body also, right? Decomposition and trouble to begin. And that's why in modern America, which is a meat, still a meat culture, we see so many problems caused by meat eating, animal food eating, and lack of fiber. Don't you think, right? By the way, how is our stomach different than a sheep or a herbivore? plant-eating animal. Their digestive system and stomach is what compared to ours? Do you know? Much longer. And they have several stomachs in many cases. Why? Because it's very hard to break down tough, raw plant fiber, cellulose. So they have to chew, chew. Can you, you've seen the cow. What is the cow doing all day? What a life, huh? Just yeah. chewing and no worries <laughs> but because they have to spend all day chewing and then the food goes in and comes back right they have no time to paint the Mona Lisa or design the space shuttle right because their whole life is okay so it was fire and cooking which liberated us from that kind of life okay made our free life possible so what this means is this, the macrobiotic diet is the ideal ratio of plant to animal. It's the ideal ratio of grain to vegetable. It's the ideal utilization of plant protein. For example, beans or soy products, right? Together with grain. So with that ideal pattern, combined with proper chewing, then digestive trouble becomes extremely rare. Extremely rare, okay? But let's take a look then. Unfortunately, that's not the case in many cases. Let's see how things go wrong, okay? So let's see, where do you think, right, in our digestive tract, if we eat lots of yang food, yang food means what? condensed food, right? Meat, the cheese, right? Chicken, egg. Egg is the most condensed, right? If we eat yin food is what? Extreme yin food is what? Refined sugar, right? Tropical fruit, strong spice, right? By the way, those things all irritate the upper part of the digestive tract. Where does this meat, heavy meat diet, where in the digestive system does it often, most often, cause trouble? The more yin part or the more yang part? Most yang part. Okay. Another example of extreme yang causing trouble in the yang parts of the body 
is eating eggs. Do you know, ladies, what part of the body is very affected by eggs, very young? Ovaries, very good, right? To illustrate this, please, on your computer, right, please Google Balut. Do you know Balut? Balut is in the Philippines fertilized duck egg which is allowed to mature and right before hatching is hard boiled it's a delicacy you'll see guys big smile right peeling back and you see an embryo duck embryo <laughs> please try, it was on bizarre foods my favorite show on tv <laughs> my favorite show it's the most macrobiotic show on tv oh my god he's eating a guinea pig what's next right Yes, please. I'm from the Philippines, and they do sell those on the street. On the street? Yeah, it's literally, you can see the, the bones and the parts of the... Um, see? Very graphic, right? Yeah. Let's go. Can we do a group tour for Balut? We'll try. Okay. I don't eat it, but... <laughs> <laughs> then, if you Google, put that image up. And then next image is dermoid. What is dermoid? Anybody? Dermoid is a type of ovarian cyst, which is hard. Often teeth, hair start to grow. And if you look at the image of dermoid and compare that to balut, it's like seeing exactly the same thing. Ovary is very young, okay? Egg is very young. Why is egg so young, by the way? What is an egg? And balut illustrates that. It's the entire germ, right, of the organism, the entire thing. Okay, so that means eating lots of meat, as we do in the West, and now more and more throughout the world. First area to become troubled is often this lower colon here, this most yang region. Okay, yin is, by the way, this triangle. Yang is this triangle. <coughs> okay. And as you know, a high meat diet often means a diet low in what? Fiber. Low in plant food. Okay? So what happens? Normally, the bowel movement is the more bulky, isn't it? With fiber. But when there's not fiber and lots of yang condensed animal food, what happens to the stool becomes what? Very compact, very young. And often what happens, that young compact stool becomes blocked. And we call that condition what? Constipation. So constipation caused by contraction is widespread in our society, don't you think? Meat eating is directly the cause. How do you diagnose that in the face, do you know? Very thin, tight lips. I used to use the former President Bush as the illustration. Remember his lips? Almost no lips, right? The reason I did that, he invited us to read my lips. And we did, right? Thank you very much, sir. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir, reporting for duty, sir. Okay. As you'll see, there's also a yin type of constipation. I, I use this famous lady. By the way, this was just published. This is amazing, the little booklet about Angelina Jolie. Her trademark lips, right? What? You know, guys are very, in the, in the movie theater, I love to kiss those constipated lips. <laughs> Angelina, right? Okay. That's constipation caused by Ian. Did she have plastic surgery? No, she from childhood was this. Please pass around this book. This you can get from Amber Waves or the Cushy store in Beckham. That's showing constipation caused by expansion. Tight lips are contraction. Her case, sugar, chocolate, tropical fruit. Boom. Okay? So there are two types. There's always yin and yang. The causes for any kind of symptom that we study, but we'll study more about that in the future. 
All right, so you have chronic constipation caused by meat, accumulation of toxin, waste material here. And because blockage is occurring, when the person has to go to the bathroom, often in order to go to the bathroom, they have to do what? I won't do my imitation. <laughs> Straining. Straining. Pressure, isn't it? Pressure. So that straining and yang pressure causes all kinds of problems. And a very common problem is this problem. The veins in the rectum and anus start to pop out from that squeezing. And what is that condition called? Hemorrhoids. So hemorrhoids is a very common result of this young animal food caused blockage in the colon. So if anybody has hemorrhoids, the very first thing that they have to do to cure them, not preparation H, <laughs> what you have to do is stop all animal food for a while, even fish. Yeah, for a while, for a while like three weeks, four weeks, okay? And be vegan for a while. Then this becomes relaxed and these start to be receding, okay? Natural remedy for hemorrhoids, do you know? For like burning or itching. I know it sounds a little funny, but raw tofu. Raw tofu. Raw tofu. If you can get it into place, right? Yeah, I'll leave that up to your imagination. I didn't get that word because I don't know what it is. Tofu. Oh. You know what tofu is. <laughs> oh, I eat it every day. <laughs> but we're talking about putting it at the other end, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Hemorrhoids caused by meat. So macrobiotics cures hemorrhoids very easily. Very easily. Okay. Next problem that occurs, please see the next page. The because, right? Blockage is there. And the person is all the time straining. There's also the possibility not only of hemorrhoids popping out, but also within the colon itself. Pockets start to blow out. <laughs> and what is that condition called? Diverticulitis, right? Diverticulitis. So these little pockets form, often in this lower colon, again, the more yang region, like descending colon, but anywhere they can form. And what's the problem with these little pockets? Very easily, what can accumulate in there and cause what kind of problem? Waste product, bacteria, right? So infection, inflammation. So I saw somebody recently who had this, and he went to the hospital. Do you know for what symptom? He had this flare-up, and he, he was taken to the emergency room. What was the symptom? Can you imagine? Pain. Pain, more than pain, high fever, infection. So he had to get so you know intensive antibiotics to deal with that infection. Okay? And also pain. So again, the macrobiotic plant eating friends, right? This doesn't exist, right? High fiber diets don't cause this, right? Meat causes this. What's the problem with the way meat is consumed today? And any time you turn on the TV, if you look at the food channel or travel channel, right? You see shows like what? The Bacon Nation. <laughs> yeah. Like he goes around the country finding the best bacon. Man versus food. <laughs> So I think some of us here are old enough to remember the Campbell's soup. 
Mm -hmm. Good, right? You're even singing the theme song. That's great. Brand loyalty, right? Madison Avenue did a great job. So when I can remember as a kid, what are we having for lunch? We're having Campbell's chicken noodle. Wow, great. It's cold outside, right? So what was the thing? You're eating the chicken noodle. What was the complaint always? There's no chicken in here. It's mostly noodles and the pieces of chicken are like tiny. Remember? What is this, right? (laughs) Or Campbell's beef and barley. (laughs) Remember? Beef is like tiny little pieces, mostly barley. Now, how do you compare that way of consuming animal food to the 16 ounce, 22 ounce, 32 ounce, whatever size steak? How is that different? Which is safer? Which was more traditional, our ancestors? Yeah, stew, soup, right, isn't it? Lots of fiber in there. Grain was in there, right? Isn't it? The celery was in there, (laughs) okay? Carrots were in there, isn't it? There were many things in there which counteracted the negatives. And the amount of meat was small. Isn't that right? But how about you go to Outback Steakhouse, right? Ding, dika, ding, dika, ding, right? And then, right? You see those guys in there, right? What, what are they having together with that 16 ounce grill? <laughs> it's a very anemic salad, which they don't touch, right? Isn't it? Steak fries, okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> so maybe a few steak fries together with this, right? And of course, they're washing it down with barley. <laughs> Beer, right? Okay. <laughs> That's how American men get their barley, by the way. <laughs> Budweiser, right? And this is why colon cancer, right? This is why all of these problems. And, right? Harvard School of Public Health. Did you get their newsletter? Please go online, it's free. Harvard School of Public Health. It's the leading, the nutritional and epidemiological. It's where Larry Cushy studied many years ago. Free newsletter. He's not here? Okay. Harvard School of Public Health. They'll send you the newsletter every couple of weeks. It reads like a press release for the Cushy Institute. Brown rice cures diabetes. Brown rice prevents diabetes. Red meat is bad. They found, right, red meat shortens the lifespan. Did you see this study? About a year ago it was published. It was all over the newspapers from the Harvard School of Public Health. And they found that a particular kind of red meat or meat was much worse than all other kinds. What category of red of meat was bad? Processed meat. Which is meaning which usually means meat processed with what? Think corned beef. Mm, So delicious, right? Think bacon. Mm, So good. Sunday morning, right? (laughs) But I'm testing you, right? (laughs) Some of you are fans of the smell. Or corned beef, right? That thick. With a Russian, right? Mm, Okay. That processed meat, why is that worse than just meat? Meat is young. Salt is what? More young. Double whammy. Same thing, meat over an open flame. What does that do to the meat? Make it more yin or more yang? Char broiled. More yang. So they know the carcinogenic compounds are formed when meat is barbecued. Did you know that? That's very dangerous. Yeah, or grilled. So if you eat salmon, how many of you guys enjoy wild salmon? Never farm raised, of course, right? Okay. What's the best way to have it? Poached. Melt in your mouth. Moist, right? 
grilled, dry, is totally different. Okay? So be careful. Same thing, like some people eat chicken, like chicken in soup, right? is better than grilled chicken. I don't recommend chicken, by the way, but salmon. Okay? Do you know, by the way, when that Harvard study was published, like CNN and the networks, who they went to for an explanation about the whole thing? He's now the go-to guy for anything plant-based diet for America. You know who it was? Bill Clinton. He's now the go-to guy, right? So I'll give you my imitation of what he said on the air. He said something like this. Yeah, I've been doing a plant-based diet. And I don't eat anything that has a mother. (laughs) And now there was an article in the AARP magazine all about Clinton's diet. Clinton loves quinoa. (laughs) Quinoa. (laughs) And now, now that Hillary is (laughs) back at home, Apparently, she's joining in the vegan fun now, right? <laughs> Can you imagine? Hill, is that miso soup ready yet? <laughs> Chell, Chell's coming over for lunch. You got those tofu burgers ready yet? <laughs> it's going to get funnier and funnier, I promise, right? <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Okay. So stay away from grilled meat. <laughs> no more corned beef. I have one question. Yes, please. What was that pink green slime that they were talking about that went into hamburger that they said it was perfectly safe? Soylent green? <laughs> Remember that movie? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't ask, don't tell, right? Just don't touch it. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we've covered, just to review where we've gone, we've looked at the digestive tract as a whole. We now know yin and yang, right? This is very valuable information. You also know the basic yin and yang of food extremes, okay? And macrobiotic foods are right in the middle. Grain is the most in the middle. You also know now our compatibility, digestive compatibility, is plant-based foods, right? With animal food as a small portion, smaller portion. And then you know if we overdo animal food, it sets in motion a whole spectrum of digestive problems, right? Beginning with constipation and then moving through to things like hemorrhoids, diverticulitis, right? And now these much more serious issues. Okay? The Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, all right? So I went online and got these images for you. Here, you can use this. And you can see a little bit of a difference there, right? Now, these are not absolute differences, but these give you an idea. One of these conditions tends to begin, these are not absolute, but tendency, tends to begin more here. And then one often begins more here and also in the small intestine. Can you see that difference there? The kind of the out darker areas showing the area of disease more, right? Can you see, right? So which of those two has the tendency to start more in the lower colon or descending colon? Can you see in the graphic there? You see, right? I didn't see, but I know. You know, okay. Ulcerative colitis, right? Whereas Crohn's, yes, can begin anywhere, but often begins in the ascending colon and also in the small intestine. So just from those general tendencies, which do you think of those two conditions? Which one is skewed more toward yang? Which one skews more toward a little bit more toward e? Which seems so, right? So please write next to ulcerative colitis more yang, okay? As we have on our drawing here, and Crohn's a little bit more e. Now, when we say e. We're not talking about so much like sugar and chocolate, all those things can add to inflammation. 
we're talking about degrees of animal food. All right, so we saw egg was the most young, correct? What's next? Red meat, beef, right? Especially processed or grilled meat, right? Then what comes after that? Going up the spectrum from most young to less young. We have egg, grilled meat, meat, poultry. Okay? Chicken. Especially grilled chicken. Okay? Then next is cheese, right? Especially hard, salty cheese. Milk, by the way, on the whole, is a yin food. Right? Isn't it like mammal's milk? What is the purpose of the cow's the milk? Make the baby do well. Grow. Especially those big mammals. They have to be strong quick, right? The horse, baby horse, walks when it comes out, right? Isn't it? We don't do that. Our milk is much more the sensitive, right? But when you take milk and you filter out the more fatty part and the water part, you're left with the protein and mineral part. And if you age that with salt, you get hard, salty cheese. So the effect of cheese is different than the effect of soft dairy, like milk or yogurt. So hard cheese would tend to affect where, do you think, in the body? Deeper or more surface? Deeper. And the milk, ice cream, yogurt would tend to affect where, do you think? Lower or upper more? Upper, more surface. So women, ladies, do you know dairy milk consumption is so much linked with what issue? Breast, right? Breast cancer. So like Angelina Jolie, she should have stopped all dairy food. Then her risk of breast cancer would become far less. Okay? Rather than doing surgery, right? All right. So from what we've seen then, okay, so far, what kind of animal food do you think would be more associated with colitis? Again, this is not every case, but this is general. More eggs and meat, right? Okay? Beginning here, right? And Crohn's, which type do you think more? Chicken, very good. And cheese, right? And I see Ginny is nodding, right? Soft cheese for the No. Like hard cheese. hard cheese. Yeah. Cottage cheese is different. That's more like breast, right? Mm -hmm. Upper body more. Okay. Hard cheese. Like pizza. Baked cheese, right? Who, li who likes pizza? You have to go vegan now. Get vegan pizza, right? Okay. So let me give you two cases that I've seen. One of both cases, right? Both conditions. One was a 40-year-old guy from Houston, Texas. So when you hear Houston, Texas already, what red flag goes off? Barbecue. Barbecue. Okay? And he, growing up in Houston, loved barbecue. And also, can you imagine barbecue with what? Hot sauce. What a bad combination, right? Because the hot sauce will contribute to inflammation. Okay? So he developed this ulcerative colitis. And it started here. And he went for treatment, medication, but nothing changed as far as his diet. He didn't stop eating those things. And over time, even though the colitis began here, it started to spread. Can you imagine? And eventually, the entire colon was affected. By that time, he was having 40, about 40 diarrhea episodes per day with blood. We went online in preparation for our talk here today and we found out some cases up to 70. Wow, well, this, is, this is torture, right? Okay. 
So they tried medication, steroids, nothing worked. So what's the final thing? The doctors told him that we have to do for you. This is all we can do for you. Remove the entire colon. Okay. I've seen clients as young as like 20 years old facing that kind of the future. One girl was came a number of years ago in Boston. She was the student at Brandeis. And she was facing this kind of thing. 20 years old. Very unfortunately, this gentleman, I saw him over Skype. He had already had the procedure. So we didn't reach him in time, but he still wanted to change his diet. And by the way, his face showed all kinds of indications that he was consuming way too much fluid. You understand why he was consuming so much fluid? Like puffy under here and swollen here, right? Why do you think after that operation, why was he consuming so much fluid? Because the large intestine's job is absorbing water. Now gone. So he had to compensate by consuming much more fluid. Okay. All right, so that's colitis. And that window is about 10 years from onset until the whole colon is involved. 10-year window which for macrobiotics gives us a wonderful opportunity to intervene at that point and prevent the colitis from going any further. You know, don't you think? So they never have to go through that procedure. Crohn's, the other case, uh, actually there were a couple from New Jersey, the gentleman, the husband, about 42 years old, Crohn's disease, same kind of symptom. Frequent the diarrhea, right, with blood and pain also. His favorite food wasn't so much barbecue, can you imagine? Favorite food, a little bit less young, still animal food. What? His favorite food was chicken. Chicken and cheese, right? Crohn's, right? Okay. All right. What do you think? Really, those modern foods are bad, aren't they? Yeah. People are torturing themselves, right, with this, right? All right. Colon cancer is the final stage, right, in this disruption of the digestive tract, lower digestive tract. And in America, where is the most common site for colon cancer? Do you think here, here, or here? colorectal cancer, most young, because of barbecued meat, right? Outback Steakhouse, right? That's the Outback Steakhouse the disease, right? Isn't it? McDonald's, right? Grilled double bacon cheeseburger. One of those is, in, one of those is insane enough. You combine three of them, it's like triple insanity. Yes, please. Our children eat chicken nuggets. No. And fresh no. America is chicken nuggets. Yeah. Tell, talk about that a little bit. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> please make a, on your note paper, please write at the top of a fresh page, right? Write the letter B at the top. Letter B. Write the letter A next to that. <laughs> and then put the letter D next to that <laughs> and put chicken nuggets and french fries underneath that. What, what what's the aftermath? That's what I want. One and common thing, chicken is so tightening in the body, very common is arthritis. Arthritis. Especially if you eat chicken wings, what part of your joint structure becomes the tight, do you know? frozen shoulder <laughs> directly the result of chicken wings and also you have to know that chicken is treated with the hormones right estrogen breast cancer is also very connected to that yes please so Susan. Child develops ulcerative colitis at five like my daughter did in kindergarten she already had had enough of these foods to cause it at such a young age yeah 
Yeah, given her constitution, right? Yeah, yeah. And also your diet during the pregnancy time. Right? Yes, please. Irritable bowel. That's different. Irritable bowel, IBS. Let me give you a background on IBS. It's not as serious as these the conditions. People suppose, like yoga student, right? Are you studying yoga? Yoga. It's my sister. She studies yoga? I, I think so. Yoga doesn't cause it, don't worry. <laughs> but they travel to India. And they eat what kind of food? More yin or more yang food in India? Yeah. Spicy food, fruits, right? And come back with IBS. Or somebody goes to Mexico, right? Wanting to see the Aztec calendar, right? And study macrobiotic cosmology and they eat Mexican stuff, very spicy, right? Come back with IBS. So what is IBS? More yin or more yang? More yin, inflammation of the colon, right? Okay? But that's fairly easy to cure. These are actual degenerative conditions that, which have started, okay? Also can be cured, as you're going to see in a minute, okay? All right, so chicken is bad, B-A-D, okay? You can fill in the rest of the B-A-D list on your own at home, right? Just don't cry when you come to chocolate, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat chicken. I don't eat chicken. Good for you. I'm asking that because I'm concerned about when I watch my grandchildren. Sure. They have, that's all they eat, and I, I, don't, I can't interfere because it costs the price. I know exactly what you're saying. When it comes to grandkids, my kids, grandkids too, policy is don't ask, don't tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big barrier between you and the grandkids, and what is that? Your kids, right? <laughs> Who are, are still resentful. So <laughs> in my case, yeah. my kids are wanting reparation because they were denied all the bad food growing up. You denied us the really good food. Now we're going to go out and have it. I used to react and say, no, you're not. Now I say, enjoy. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> See you when you get sick. <laughs> Can you imagine? Sorry? Baked flour causes mucus and definite congestion. Makes this more like compacted. All right. So as you can see, macrobiotics is the solution and the method of preventing this, right? So what I'd like to do now uh, is introduce to you, and I have included in your handout, please take a look, the cases. By the way, also remedies. Let me, before I introduce our cases, let me just say, highlight these remedies for you, okay? If someone is having... 40 diarrhea episodes per day. Is this over or under active energy? Super overactive energy. So we want a remedy that is calming and soothing and also contracting a little bit. So in macrobiotics we have a very effective remedy called the ro roasted salt pack. Has anybody here used a roasted salt pack? It's very good for aches and pains anywhere in the body. You, you guys. And basically you roast dry salt in a skillet, right? With like you're roasting seeds with a paddle. And you pour that into a small towel and you tie the ends up to make a tight little bag and you apply it like a hot water bottle. And it stays hot for like 15 or 20 minutes. And you can reuse the salt again five or six times. Very good for diarrhea. I use it also for any kind of aches or pains in the it, joints. It should be sea salt. Ideally, okay. ideally. If you can't get sea salt, then regular salt is okay. Is that irritable bowel? Correct. That's the cure for irritable bowel. Is that right? That's right. Because my sister, she can't leave her house in the morning. No, please, please, can we get an extra copy for you? Yeah. You need a copy, right? I need it. 
She goes four to seven times in the morning. Yeah. The, the, no need. No need. You guys are sharing? Okay. Then here is her remedy page, right? Okay. The next remedy is this big root. And I found a really cool photo of these guys in Japan washing the big roots. Can you see that's like part of the colon? <laughs> okay. Kuzu. Kuzu, right? Kuzu has what kind of property? Especially if you combine it with umeboshi, which is very strong alkaline. It restores good alkaline balance to the colon. As we know, the colon is supposed to be a little alkaline. Kuzu is very contracting? Yes. Kuzu will cause the loose stool to become shu. So if you combine this special tea, ume kuzu, with shoyu, shoyu, soy sauce, together with the salt pack, you can cure the symptom in a matter of days. And that's what I've used for these, the people with these conditions who I've seen, and very successful. By the way, I didn't include it, but what is a good remedy for constipation caused by yang? Very good. Canton. Do you know Canton? Canton is the sea uh, algae, which is used to make jello. Canton is for constipation. And kuzu is for diarrhea. These together, Canton is the dish, right? You know, right? These, I call them the crown jewels of macrobiotics. They're very precious things that we can use to forever, for our life, to manage our digestive health forever. Yes? How would Canton as a remedy differ from warm apple juice? A little bit more, uh, the, what should we say, lubricating. Although apple juice itself is good, right? For yang constipation. And how do you prepare it as a remedy? The canton? No, no, canton. Oh, canton. Canton is a dessert. You use apple juice, apple juice, and then you use canton flakes and you boil and keep stirring until they thoroughly dissolve. And then you pour into little cups, like molds, and you put in your you can put in your refrigerator. And then half an hour later you've got jello coming out. Okay? Constipation. This is for diarrhea. <clears throat> Kuzu plus salt pack is for like Crohn's or colitis where there's extensive diarrhea. Overactive energy. This calms the energy down. Okay. By the way, Canton is a very good vegetable quality substitute for jello. What is gelatin, by the way? Please Google. You'll be astonished. It's the bones, the hooves, the skin of pigs and cows. and Never feed your kids gummy bears, right? <laughs> That's very cute, right? Mm, the, look, look, we have gummy bears, but this is the dead animal. Very gruesome, hiding behind the fun, right? Okay, okay, okay. bigger the front, bigger the back, okay. All right, so to further illustrate the healing power of macrobiotics when it comes to these uh, serious, actually, digestive disorders, I invited our two friends to come and talk. And also there are two cases on your handout, too. And actually, Marissa's case is uh, from her website here as well. So who would like to come up? Maybe Ginny first and then Marissa? What do you think? Yeah, and talk to tell a little bit about your story. This is Virginia Harper. Did you meet her? She's running the Macrobiotic Center in the lovely city of Nashville, Tennessee. Came down. Country, Indeed. it's called Country Macrobiotics. Yes. And Ed came down years ago to do our workshop with me there. And I took him to the country music places around town. My favorite was the guitar store where they had all the Oh, yes. Yes, that was nice. Wow. Um, well, um, this is correct, where he had the chart of the Crohn's and, and the causes of Crohn's the first time I saw Michelle. He said, chicken and chocolate, your Crohn's. And I said, correct, I grew up on a chicken farm in Chile. <laughs> and the chocolate, not so much, because, but it was another sweet sticky. Um, in Chile, we traditionally make a dessert where we make homemade sweetened milk and boil it for hours and hours and hours 
and it comes it becomes like a caramel almost but even better than that if you can imagine and it was very traditional for our families to make desserts out of it and I as a child would eat spoonfuls after spoonfuls in Chile our diet was besides those things I just mentioned uh, macrobiotic in that we went to the store almost on a daily basis bought a fresh food cooked homemade meals every day we had little refrigerators not huge things that we stored food in for days and days so in that aspect it was very natural local and even our milk that we drank was raw when I came to the States, I love the milk here because it was sweet. When you taste raw milk, it's not sweet. It has the natural enzymes with it, so it helped my digestion, I'm sure. So that drastic change in diet made it more evident what was causing my illness. And I started symptoms very early, constipation first, and then it became the explosive bloody diarrhea that I suffered with for seven years. And so, my medical journey was a little less dramatic than some of the cases I see now because doctors back then were more gentle. They started with things that make sense, like anti-inflammatory drugs. Now they're knocking your immune system, which makes no sense. And so back then they were a little bit more gentle, so in a way I had a better chance. So the food worked quickly and worked effectively. And I saw that within the first few weeks of my healing journey. Now when I deal with people, they're walking through my door, kind of like the gentleman had talked about, you know, on the way to getting their colons out. Or the drugs they've been taking have damaged them so much, the Remicades and Homeras, that it's really hard to get their immune systems back up. And that causes a whole set of problems in itself. So the prevention of this is very, very important to get the word out how to prevent these conditions. And my youngest case was a four-year-old. And so to see a four-year-old dealing with bloody diarrhea, and they came and stayed with me, I do a 10-day program, and the day she didn't have diarrhea, she came running to me, she says, come look, come look, come look because I check toilets a lot when I do this work. <laughs> and she went in there and showed me. Oh, we were jumping up and down and we're celebrating, no blood today. And she said, does this mean I'm not gonna die? This is what goes on in their head. So, you know, it's, it's, it's dramatic because it's a very embarrassing condition as it is. And if you, can connect food to it quickly, people get it and people feel it. In your gut, we feel everything on our gut. And so that's where we have to go with this. And the quality of the food we put in it is essential. And I think one of the reasons of getting younger and younger children dealing with this is because of the GMOs. And even though we can get organic food, the genetically modified is really messing up. There was a study with, um, I don't know, Harvard did it, but the pig study that showed the pig's stomach were totally ulcerated just eating GMO foods. So, you know, this is what's happening. So we need to be proactive, we need to speak up, and we need to guide people to a better way of dealing with this problem. Thank you. Thank you. So again, Virginia Harper. Ginny Harper is in um, Nashville, and she has a book. Ginny, your book is titled, please. Um, controlling Crohn's disease the natural way. Controlling Crohn's disease the natural way. Great book. Yeah. I read it. Wonderful. Wonderful book. Very, very and she's a very, very charming the presenter, right? And, very charming. Uh, and uh, you can get it through Amazon. Okay, thank you. Now, New York City. Let's hear Marissa Marinelli. 
who has a very dramatic story. She was very much influenced by Ginny of ulcerative colitis. So Marissa, please say hi and tell your story, please. Just, okay, summarize or whatever. Thank you. Hi, I'm just gonna sit over here. Um, so yes, my story started in New York City. Um, I was raised as a dancer, and that's what the first paragraph talks about in my story in the back. Um, I danced my entire life since I was three into college, and so I was very active, very fit, and very hungry all the time. And as a dancer, I really needed a lot of strong protein, definitely, and a lot of pasta because just to fill that energy and to kind of get me through all those strenuous workouts. Um, maybe I'm not supposed to say this, but I am a cheese and uh, chicken person. <laughs> but I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Um, but that was literally my consumption. Um, I'm sure, I mean, I did have red meat on occasion as well, sometimes steaks, more burgers. Um, I wasn't a chocolate person, so, okay. But I think just the influence of New York City alone was probably like, you know, 10 pound steaks on me like every day, so. Um, my, my condition definitely did start in the rectum area and, you know, of my descending colon and then went up into, you know, eventually the transverse. Um, so, you know, it started with, you know, two years of being in and out of the hospital, in and on and off the medications, and I finally was given Virginia Harper's book, Controlling Crohn's Disease in a Natural Way, and I just was inspired by a story that somebody could actually get through this, and I wanted to do whatever it took to get back to my dancing. So that started my macrobiotic journey, and I would say that just was the beginning. It definitely. The hardest part for me, coming from a, a place where this was, you know, it's so not part of Western culture. Um, where do you get this food? What does it look like? What does it taste like? Especially when your taste buds have been coated by delicious, sugary, cheesy, you know, foods. How am I going to get myself to eat a vegetable? Because I never picked up a vegetable, ever. I had broccoli. If I had some broccoli, that was, okay, great. I, I couldn't, even if it was mixed in with my food, it would not be eaten ever. So how was I going to eat this food was my biggest challenge. And I was such a stubborn person that my body was like, no, you're not going to eat this food. We're just going to throw it up. So, you know, I, I had to kind of trick it and, you know, really be gentle with myself and take those really baby steps into introducing this food little by little. If you have, okay, I would make small part portions and say if I just have a bite of everything, I have to at least have a bite of everything and then eat whatever I could, I liked the most, and if I was good, I gave myself a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You gotta start somewhere. You know, and eventually, I realized, oh, I actually like this dish today. And then I would eat more of that dish. Oh, I made another dish. Oh, is that how you make that? And the more dishes I learned, the more I learned how to cook, because I didn't know how to cook, the easier it got to kind of incorporate it. Um, I went to the Way of Health program at the Cushy Institute in 2006, and that's where I first met Ed. I don't know if he remembers that. Um, I looked like a different person back then. And, um, that really, you know, it it showed me um, how to cook. And after um, after being kind of engulfed in this environment outside New York, that took me on this journey of, okay, I'm just going to go home and do this. And I just started cooking and eating and, you know, really, again, cutting out wherever I could. And if I had to have a cookie or a trip or something, okay, fine because it got me through this next level. And it took, I mean, within a month, I was jumping out of bed. And my symptoms cleared up while at the Cushy Institute within the 10 days. Um, actually, it was interesting. They, I, I had my consultation the week before I went. 
they toned down, came back really strong for three days and then went away. And, you know, since then it's been what well, was wonderful for the six months that I was, you know, on it hardcore. And I want to say what I learned the hard way too was don't get, to, once you get to that point, if you can get to the six months, don't get so excited that, oh, this is it, because it takes three years to heal your colon. And you need to keep going with it in the good stages. And I know I was talking to some people about this, and um, so that's what I just wanted to, you can do this, but it takes a while. She's a wonderful actress. Oh. <laughs> do you see the, um, her video? It's on her website. What, tell your website. Uh, it's, it's on your, it's on this handout, www.macromarinelli.com. And she was on the show The Incurables. Did you know that show? Yeah. They did a segment on Marissa. Now they show her in bed, they show her suffering. Did you act those? That was me roles? acting. You were acting. <laughs> I thought, how did they know to go film you before? Um, <laughs> I'm so naive. Well, you know, I mean, but that, that was really me recalling those moments, and that's really exactly what I went through. And I went through the 40 times a day diarrhea. That was me. That was my condition. And I promise you. She's an you, amazing actress. She re reenacted <laughs> all of that stuff. I thought, oh, my gosh. And then you see her afterwards. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliantly done, Marissa. Thank you so much. She has a wonderful website, and she and Ginny both are counseling and guiding many, many people and helping with these conditions. So let's give them a really big round of applause, okay? Thank you, Marissa. Please visit both websites, okay? And please refer anyone with those conditions to the wonderful websites, right? And their contact, right? Okay, great. So this is the type of study that we do at our Cushy Institute uh, in our, we call Macrobiotic Leadership Program. So we take the full spectrum of modern illnesses and look at it, look at them this way, including how to cook, how to do energy healing, okay, how to give home remedies for all of these conditions. So I hope some of you folks can come and join us. Uh, actually, our semester starts uh, in September. So I'm inviting whoever has the opportunity or the time or the wherewithal to come up and join us for our fall session. Uh, and really, this is the kind of in-depth study that we provide at the KI and the kind of study that prepares you to be like these wonderful ladies and help and guide the, your family, your friends, and eventually the whole society. So I hope that your experience here at the summer conference was a good one. Everybody okay? Let's hear a rousing applause for John Russo and Kathy and all of our staff and teachers. And then thank you so much, folks, for joining in. I'll be, I'm teaching at the KI, so you can reach me there anytime. And I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.